The Korsun Shevchenkovsky offensive led to the Battle of the Korsun Cherkasy Pocket, which took place from 24 January to 16 February 1944. The offensive was part of the Dnieper Carpathian Offensive. In it, the 1st and 2nd Ukrainian fronts, commanded, respectively, by Nikolai Vartutin and Ivan Konev, trapped German forces of Army Group South in a pocket near the Dnieper River. During weeks of fighting, the two Red Army fronts tried to eradicate the pocket. The encircled German units attempted a breakout in coordination with a relief attempt by other German forces, and roughly two out of three encircled men succeeding in escaping the pocket and almost one-third of their men. Dead or prisoners, the Soviet victory in the Korsun Shevchenkovsky offensive marked the successful implementation of Soviet deep operations. Soviet deep battle doctrine envisaged the breaking of the enemy's forward defenses to allow fresh operational reserves to exploit the breakthrough by driving into the strategic depth of the enemy front. The arrival of large numbers of U.S. and British-built trucks and half-tracks gave the Soviet forces much greater mobility than they had in the earlier portion of the war. This Coupled with the Soviet capacity to hold large formations in reserve gave the Soviets the ability to drive deep behind German defenses again and again. Though the Soviet operation at Korsun did not result in the collapse in the German front that the Soviet command had hoped for, it marked a significant change in operations. Through the rest of the war the Soviets would place large German forces in jeopardy while the Germans were stretched thin and constantly attempting to extract themselves from one crisis to the next. Mobile Soviet offensives were the hallmark of the Eastern Front for the remainder of the war. January 1944 In the autumn of 1943, the German forces of Field Marshal Erich von Manstein's Army Group South including General Otto Wohler's 8th Army had fallen back to the Panther Wotan Line, a defensive position that in Ukraine followed the Dnieper River. By 1 December 1943 the line had been broken and the Soviet Army had crossed the Dnieper in force. Only two corps, the Xi under Gen. Wilhelm Stemmermann, the 42nd Army Corps under Lt. Gen. Theobald Lieb and the attached corps detachment B from the 8th Army were holding a salient in the new Soviet line. The salient to the west of Cherkasy extended some 100 kilometers to the Dnieper River settlement of Kanev, with the town of Korsun roughly in the center of the salient, with the first Ukrainian front to its left and the second Ukrainian front to its right. Marshal of the Soviet Union Georgi Dukov realized the potential for destroying Wola's 8th Army with the Stalingrad model as precedent and using similar tactics as were applied to defeat Paulus's encircled 6th Army. Dukov recommended to the Soviet Supreme Command to deploy 1st and 2nd Ukrainian fronts to form two armored rings of encirclement, an inner ring around the pocket followed by destruction of the forces it contained and an external ring to prevent relief formations from reaching the trapped units. Despite repeated warnings from Manstein and others, Hitler refused to allow the exposed units to be pulled back to safety. General Konev held a conference at his headquarters at Boltashka on 15 January with his commanders and the political commissars to pass on the orders received from Stavka. The initial attack was to be conducted by Konev's own 2nd Ukrainian Front from the southeast by 53rd Army and 4th Guards Army with 5th Guards Tank Army to exploit penetrations supported by 5th Air Army, to be joined in progress by 52nd Army, 5th Guards Cavalry Corps and 2nd Tank Army. Additionally, from Vartutin's 1st Ukrainian Front, 27th and 40th Armies were to be deployed from the northwest, with 6th Tank Army to exploit penetrations supported by 2nd Air Army. Many of these formations had received an inflow of new personnel. Red Army planning further included extensive deception operations that the Soviets claimed were successful. However, the German 8th Army War Diary shows clearly that the German staffs were concerned with the threat at hand. 
encirclement. The Soviet attack started on 24 January when Konev's 2nd Ukrainian Front attacked the salient from the southeast. Breakthrough was quickly achieved, and the penetration was exploited by the 5th Guards Tank Army and the 5th Guards Cavalry Corps the following day. Despite the awareness of German 8th Army staff that an attack was imminent, they were surprised by the appearance of the 1st Ukrainian Front's newly formed 6th Tank Army. The 6th Tank Army, with 160 tanks and 50 self-propelled guns, was inexperienced and took longer than expected to penetrate the western flank of the salient. A mobile group from 5th Mechanized Corps 233rd Tank Brigade, under the command of General Savalev, with 50 tanks and 200 submachine gun armed infantrymen, occupied Lysyanka and moved into the outskirts of Zivanihoritka by 28 January. Here, these troops of the 6th Tank Army met the 2nd Ukrainian Front's 20th Tank Corps. Over the next three days, the two tank armies formed a thinly manned outer ring around what was now the Korsun pocket while another, inner, ring was formed by the Soviet 27th, 52nd, and 4th Guard Armies. The Soviets were optimistic over the progress of the operation. Stalin was promised a second Stalingrad, and he expected it. Konev wired, There is no need to worry, comrade Stalin. The encircled enemy will not escape. Inside the pocket were nearly 60,000 men from six German divisions, operating at about 55% of their authorized strength, along with a number of smaller combat units. Among the trapped German forces were the 5th SS Panzer Division Viking, with the attached 5th SS Infantry Brigade Wallonian, the Estonian SS Infantry Battalion Narwa, and several thousand Russian auxiliaries. General Wilhelm Stemmermann, the commander of 11th Corps, was placed in command of the forces in the pocket. These forces were designated Gruppi Stemmermann, the 5th SS Panzer Division, with some 11,400 personnel, had 30 operational Panzer III IV tanks and assault guns left, and six more in repair. The division further had 47 artillery pieces, of which 12 were self-propelled guns. German relief attacks Manstein moved quickly, and by early February the 3 and 47th Panzer Corps were assembled for a relief effort. Hitler intervened, however, and ordered the attack be transformed into an effort to counter-encircle the two Soviet army groups. General Hermann Breith, commander of 3rd Panzer Corps requested the relief formations be united to attempt to force a corridor to the trapped Gruppi Stemmermann. This request was refused, and the counter-encirclement of the Soviet forces was attempted. The attack by the XLVII Panzer Corps 11th Panzer Division on the southeastern flank of the pocket quickly stalled. The veteran division had only 27 tanks and 34 assault guns operational, therefore its contribution was limited. The three Panzer Corps attempt continued until 8 February, when it became undeniable that the effort had failed. Manstein ordered the Corps to instead drive directly to the relief of Gruppi Stemmermann, pulling the 3rd Panzer Corps back and reorganizing for the new attack 15 kilometers south of Boyarka took three days. On the 11th of February Breith began a push with the 16th and 17th Panzer Divisions driving toward the Naloitikich River. They initially made good progress. The 1st Panzer Division and 1st SS Panzer Division LSSAH covered the northern flank of the drive. As they drove deeper into the Soviet positions Dukov ordered Vartutin to assemble four tank corps with the goal of cutting off the attacking German spearhead. The weather warmed, turning the roads to a soft mud and bogging down German progress. Here the liabilities of Germany's wheel vehicles became evident. The Soviet forces had been provided Lend-Lease U.S. built four-wheel and six-wheel drive trucks. These were largely able to get through, whereas German two-wheel drive vehicles were not. Kony issued orders for the 4th Guards Army and 5th Guards Cavalry Corps to attempt to split the pocket on the night of 5-6 February. 
The strike was to fall where the two German corps boarded. As fighting progressed the Soviet goal became clear to Stemmermann and Lieb. Stemmermann ordered the 5th SS Division's armor to the scene. Together with the 72nd Infantry Division the Soviet attack was brought to a halt, buying the defenders time. Red Army efforts were renewed between 7-10 February. This effort was hobbled by shortages in supply. Three Panzer Corps penetrations toward the Naloitikich River made the supply lines for Soviet formations such as Vartutin's 6th Tank Army much longer. The Red Air Force attempted to resupply some units using the PO-2 aircraft. Despite supply difficulties, units from the 2nd Ukrainian Front were able to close in on Korsun by 10 February collapsing the pocket to an area of 6 by 7 miles. Surrender demand and German maneuver within the pocket. On the 11th of February, 3rd Panzer Corps continued its drive east. The exhausted force reached the Naloitikich stream and established a small bridgehead on the eastern bank. 3rd Panzer Corps could advance no further, Group Stemmermann would have to fight its way out. Both antagonists realized that the Wehrmacht relief efforts had come to a critical stage. Despite heavy Soviet propaganda inducements, very few German soldiers and no Waffen SS men in the cauldron had surrendered. Dukov thus decided to send Palmetters under a white flag with surrender demands. A Red Army Lieutenant Colonel, translator and bugler arrived in an American jeep and presented letters for both Stemmermann and Lieb signed by Marshal Dukov and Generals Konevan, Vartutin, the German officer on headquarters duty, a major at Corps Detachment B and a translator, received the emissaries. After cordial talks, refreshments and a handshake, the Soviets departed without an answer. The answer would be in the form of continued bitter resistance. The German Air Force mounted an aerial resupply operation to both the encircled forces and the German relief columns. On 28 January, the 8th Aviation Corps began operations that eventually saw the use of 832 transport aircraft, 478 bombers, 58 fighter bombers, and 168 fighters. Over the course of the operation, only 32 transport aircraft, 13 bombers, and 5 fighters were lost. After the Corsun airfield was abandoned on 12 February, deliveries had to be dropped in by parachute. Fuel drums and ammunition crates were dropped into snowbanks by transports flying just above the deck. The Luftwaffe effort succeeded in delivering 82,948 gallons of fuel and 868 tons of ammunition plus 4 tons of medical supplies to the encircled forces and 325 tons of ammunition, 74,289 gallons of fuel and 24 tons of food to spearheads of the relief formations as well as evacuating 4,161 wounded while the Corsun airfield remained operational. But even this FA had only met about half of the daily requirements of the encircled troops as estimated by the German 8th Army headquarters. Stemmermann began withdrawing troops from the north side of the pocket, reorienting the thrust of the escape direction, and attacking south to expand toward the relief forces on the north bank of the Naloitikich. The frenetic maneuvering within the pocket confused the Soviets, convincing them that they had trapped the majority of the German 8th Army. The trapped forces were now to capture the villages of Novobuda, Komarovka, Kilki and Shandarovka at the southwestern perimeter of the pocket to reach a favorable jump-off line for the breakout. On the 11th of February Major Robert Kastner's 105th Grenadier Regiment of the 72nd Infantry Division captured Novobuda in a night assault. The following night Komarovka fell in similar fashion. On the evening of 15 February the 105th Regiment again, using its last reserves and with two assault guns, secured Kilki, defeating a Soviet counterattack supported by armor. However, of all the German divisions in the pocket, 
The 5th SS Panzer Division did more than any other to ensure the continued survival of Gruppe Stemmermann, since the 5th SS Division was the only truly mobile force inside the pocket. The division's tracked units were repeatedly shifted from one end of the pocket to the other to shore up crumbling lines. The pocket had wandered south and halfway toward its rescuers and rested on the village of Shandarovka. The settlement was heavily defended by the Soviets, had been captured by 72nd Infantry troops, was retaken by units of the Soviet 27th Army and recaptured by the Germania Regiment of 5th SS Panzer Division. By nightfall on 16 February, 3rd Panzer Corps fought its way closer to the encircled formations. The spearheads were now 7 kilometers from Group Stemmermann.